There are numerous ways to express friendship and one of them is to print a photo of your friend onto a ukulele. Alright, so in this video we will transfer a photograph onto wood. It doesn't need to be a face, you can use any photo. Then we finish this ukulele and then I will play you a song. Alright, so needless to say this started as a joke. So I was telling to this guy, you know, you could transfer a photograph onto wood and then he said, yeah, you should put my face on a guitar. But we're not gonna do it on a guitar. I would never make a silly paint job on a guitar, but on a ukulele it's okay. In case you're interested, I'm using the 21 euro Halle Benton ukulele kit. It comes with everything except the paint stuff. So when you want to transfer a photograph onto wood, it's best to use a backing paper of stickers or labels. Then you need to use a laser printer. Doesn't work with inkjet. If you don't have a laser printer, just go to your office and print it there. You use a special glue, put it on the photo and the wood, and then you dry it with a blow dryer. I hope it will work. I only have one try. Otherwise, I guess I'll need to paint it a solid color. So wish me luck. All right, so this stuff is called photo transfer potch. I'm covering the photograph and the area of the wood. Don't use too much. Just use a little bit so it's all covered. If you use too much, it doesn't work so well and you end up having just half of the photo transferred. Now we apply it to the wood, press it on firmly. You can use a squeegee if you have one. And now we blow dry it for 10 minutes. All right, 10 minutes are over. Okay, sometimes it goes wrong and uh, Let's hope for the best. Remember when I said I only have one try? I lied. I'll see if I can sand it off and then we'll try again. It's usable. I'll sand off the excess of the glue. Somehow one eye is always messed up, but I'll just do some touch-ups with a pen. Then I'm masking off the sides to create a fake binding. Now we will put some wood stain on it, or in that case it's actually mica powder pigment because it doesn't have much wood grain, so I want to try those. Those are ex actually for epoxy resin. We'll do the front in blue to make it match with the background of the photo. Yeah, this is a bit too cloudy, I guess I'll spray some blue paint over it. Alright, for the headstock I also wanted to do a photo transfer decal, but I messed up, I forgot to print it out mirrored because if you have text, you need to print it out mirrored, otherwise you can't read it in the end, obviously. So we'll just do plan B. I'm covering the photo print with a paper and I'm spraying on blue paint. The wood of the headstock is a bit darker, so I'm first spraying a white base coat on it and then the pearlescent blue over it. then I would stain the sides and back. This blue is from the Kida wood dye kit. Uh, the Mika powders from earlier were just an experiment. I wanted to see what they look like. Uh, so this is now a real wood dye which goes on much more evenly. I didn't have a green wood dye so I just mixed yellow with a little bit of blue to get this bright green. Actually, I've accidentally applied it a little bit too wet here, which could cause the dye to bleed under the masking tape, but luckily it didn't. 
Now I'm taking off the masking tape and we get this stripe of natural wood. And now we start finishing it with some true oil, which is a kind of uh, boiled linseed oil finish. And I will apply one layer every 12 hours. By the way, this true oil is mixed with one third of white spirits. Mixing in white spirits or naphtha is supposedly what they're doing at the Music Man factory when they're finishing necks. So I cover the whole surface and then I wipe off the excess immediately. And I will do about seven layers. Now I'm spraying a nitrocellulose clear coat. I want to go for a matte finish, so I think I sprayed about two or three layers and I let the nitro cure for about a week, just to be sure. Now I'm test fitting the neck. Okay, now it's ready to be glued together. Now I'm pressing body and neck together, but don't crush the ukulele. Then I attach those rubber bands and I let the glue cure for a few hours. Time to attach the tuners. I'm using a ruler to get them on really straight. I center punch the holes for the screws and a drill, etc. The fret ends were not bad, but I wanted to slightly lever them from the side and crown them a little bit. And now I'm gluing on the fretboard. I also glue on the nut. I basically just placed it where the headstock started having that angle. And I also put on rubber bands. This is what it says in the manual. The tricky part will be the location of the bridge, but, but the kit came with two center punched holes for the bridge, so I will just put the bridge there. And I hope the intonation will be good, because the ukulele has no intonation adjustment. And as it turned out, you can shoot rubber bands with a ukulele. Okay, now we can string it up and I will play you a song. All right, so this is it. Uh, I think it sounds good, but the tuning stability is absolutely horrendous. I need to retune all the time. Maybe this would improve if I put on brand name strings, because kid strings are usually terrible, especially at this price point. Then the saddle and the nut are a little bit too high, so it's hard to intonate. So if you want to make it a player's ukulele, you can consider sanding those down. So for the demos, I will put on a capo to help with the tuning stability and the intonation. Alright, I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like, comment and subscribe. And now what's left to do is to hand over this surprise gift. So in case you're wondering, I'm working on a ship. The guy on the ukulele is my replacement. We're taking turns, which means if he doesn't show up, I can never go on vacation. So this deserves a custom ukulele.